All right, so we just wrapped up finishing the $500 car challenge, and any good eventful week will usually have some good eventful after stories. This one was no different. So when I left Florida, uh, David left at like four in the afternoon. Rob and I went, tried to sell the cars to the Lamborghini dealership, and then drove the limo to the airport after the wrecker picked up the, um, the, the roofless Cadillac. Uh, Rob dropped me off at the airport, and there was a guy in the curb being like, hey man, cool car, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, all right, sell him the car. And then I got on an airplane, last I heard of it. So Rob was then on an airplane two hours after me flying to Michigan and all was good in the world. I'm home, I'm in my bed, I'm trying to sleep. And at two in the morning, I get a phone call from my brother in Florida. Hey, uh, I've got four cops here, they're looking for you. All right, well, fair enough. And I'm just trying to think of what we did that would warrant cops showing up at my brother's house looking for me. The reason they were at my brother's house was I used his address to register the cars. Um, and I was like, still trying to figure out, I'm like, all right, why are they looking for me? Like, what did we do? Or what did Rob do now? Because I left the car with Rob. And I told my brother, I'm like, hey, look, well, I'm in New York. I don't know what the cops want from me. And he's like, hey, my brother's in New York. Their response was, does he know where his car is? I'm like, all right, this is getting interesting. No, I don't know where my car is. Uh, no, he doesn't know where his car is. Uh, okay, uh, I'm like, well, I, I left it with Rob Dom. All right, and then, and then they heard Rob Dom, and they're like, all right, okay, and then they all ran off. And I was like, well, that was awkward. So I'm now trying to figure out why what is going on with the car, where it is, and what the guy who was going to buy it from Rob may have done with it. Now, I was like, hmm. so in my head, I'm going through, and there's a guy driving in Florida robbing banks in the limo. And the problem with that is that if they know Rob Dom's name, they've already got that guy in custody. That's how they know Rob Dom. So a lot of things going through my head. Next thing I know, I'm like, well, why would they ask if I knew where the car was if they've already got the car? So then they may just be doing a stolen car. I call Rob. I'm like, Rob, you got to call the cops and figure out what's going on. Rob, oh yeah, I just left the car in a parking lot. And the guy at the airport said he was just going to pick it up and we'll, we'll work everything out later. I was like, well, probably not the smartest idea, but not the last time you're going to screw me on something like that. Why don't you call the cops and see what's actually going on and if there's actually some form of police chase or they're looking for the car, they don't know where the car is. Rob calls up the cops and the cops bounce them back and forth. They, they bounce them from Miami to the other place to the other place. And all they can say is like, yeah, they're, they're investigating the car, but there's nothing, it's not stolen or anything like that. It hasn't been involved in a crime or anything like that. So then I start thinking, I'm like, okay, if they didn't find this guy, then how'd they know Rob's name? And I pieced together in my head, what they ended up doing was following Rob, who parked the car at the tri-rail station, on the security cameras, through the tri-rail station to the airport, and then onto his flight. So that's how they had Rob Dom's information. So what they must have thought was that Rob Dom chopped up the car, and maybe even me, abandoned the car at the tri-rail station, and then bounced out. Now, parking at the tri-rail station would have been great, uh, because then somebody could have picked it up the next day because it's 24 hours of free parking, except you're not allowed to go to the airport from there. So now that they followed them on the security cameras to the airport, they knew the car was illegally parked and it was a race against the clock to pull that car out, to A, verify the car was still in the parking lot, but B, pull that car out of the parking lot before it got towed. We didn't get it out of the parking lot before it got towed. The car got towed to a local uh, tow yard by the time we were able to get a notarized letter down to release the car to somebody, the storage fees were at $550. So then we stuck the car up on the Panjo account for $2,500, figuring if somebody actually wants to buy it that bad, we'll spend the thousand or 1200 or whatever the uh, climbing bill is to get it out of the storage place. We'll spend it and then somebody can get themselves a car. If it's not, if it doesn't go for $2,500, we're not wasting the effort to even getting it out of the impound. That car is part of Miami's folklore for the rest of time. Uh, the second car, the uh, roofless Cadillac 79 DeVille, everybody corrected us. The badge on the back of the car was a Cadillac Seville, it said on their trunk, 
but that was the wrong badge. I don't know what point in time in the last 40 years it went and put Seville on it. It's a 79 Cadillac DeVille. Who knew? Who cares? Um, but that car we sold for cash for junkers for 50 bucks. 50 bucks. <laughs> that, that's almost embarrassing. Uh, and then lastly, the Isuzu we gave away to the young lady that jumped into the car in the bikini down in South Beach because why not? She was willing, she knew how to drive stick. She was willing to drive it home on no plate. God bless her. She gets herself a free car. That's what happened to the cars. Uh, we didn't necessarily abandon anything like we usually would do somewhere with the title on the seat and the key in the ignition. But those are the stories behind the three cars. Adventurous times, Rob Dom sort of didn't use his head again and almost got us in trouble, but it looks like all is well in the world. Thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you next time.